Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about Degong, right? So, this World Degong Day was on May 28, right? So on the eve of that day, experts have said that unless conserved, they may go extinct, right? So, we need to discuss about Degong, right? So, Degong, it's also called as sea cow. You can see the picture there. It is also called as sea cow and it's a large herbivorous marine mammal. So, it's a herbivorous animal, right? And it's a marine mammal. So, this degongs, they are herbivorous. That's why they graze on the sea grasses. Especially, they will graze on the uh, young shoots and roots in the shallow coastal waters, right? So, they are herbivorous marine mammal which are found nearby the coastal region. Why? Because they are herbivorous animals and the sea grasses can be seen nearby the coastal region, right? So, they can consume up to around 40 kilograms of sea grass per day. So, they are large herbivorous marine mammals and Dagong is strictly a marine mammal, right? So, we cannot see them in the freshwater areas. It's a strictly a marine mammal. So, it's a mammal, right? That means they will give birth to their young ones. Okay, so Dagong or sea cow is a marine mammal. So, this Dagong can be seen in the shallow coastal waters of the Indian and the Western Pacific Ocean. So, they are seen in the shallow coastal waters because they need to get the sea grasses. That's why they are seen in the shallow coastal waters. Okay. Now, they are facing lots of threat. Because of that, they are in danger. And that's why we have listed this Dagong in the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So, we know about the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and the Schedule 1. Schedule 1 means if you are listing any animal in the Schedule 1, they are the most protected animals in India. Right. So, Degong is listed in the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection in 1972 and also it is listed in the recovery program for critically endangered species. Okay, so we know that there are 21 species which are included in the uh, recovery program for critically endangered species. Right. So, Degong is one of them. Right. So, this critically endangered recovery program, it is one of the third component of the uh, centrally sponsored scheme called as Integrated Development of Wildlife Habitat Scheme. Right. So, Integrated Development of Wildlife Habitat Scheme is having three components. Out of that one component is recovery program for critically endangered species. And within that recovery program, we are having 21 species like the Gangiri dolphin is there, okay, Sangai deer, right. So, like that there are 21 species. So, in that list, Degong is also included. Now, in 2013, uh, Zoological Survey of India released a 2013 survey report of the population of this sea cow, right. So, that's why in 2015, UPSC asked a question regarding the Degong. Right. So, that report was in 2018. So, in that report, it was mentioned that there were only 250 uh, Degong present in the uh, Gulf of Mana region in the Tamil Nadu, then Andaman Nicobar and also Gulf of Kutch region. Right. That means they are facing that much threat. Okay. So, that was the report. Based on that, UPC asked the question in 2015. Okay. So, we need to discuss about some threats regarding that animal. Okay. The main threats of this Degongs are destruction and modification of habitat, pollution, rampant illegal fishing activities, uh, vessel strikes, unsustainable hunting or poaching and unplanned tourism. Vessel strikes means uh, the boats, vessels, they might hit on the uh, Degongs. Okay. So, one of the main threat was the hunting of or poaching, right? So, this meat of this Degong was having around 1000 rupees per kilogram and the people were having a wrong impression that by consuming the meat of this Degong, it will cool down the body temperature. Okay, it will lower the body temperature. Right. So that's why this meat of this dagong was widely used. Okay. For that it was hunted and it was poached. Right. So that much cost it was having. Right. Right now the killing of this dagong is stopped. Okay. Because there were lots of uh, awareness creation campaigns done by the Wildlife Institute of India. Right. As a result of that, uh, killing of this Degong is uh, stopped. Now, another threat we discussed was the modification of habitat destruction, right? So, the loss of seagrass beds due to the ocean floor trolling was also one of the reasons for the uh, reduction in population of Degongs, okay? Now, in all the times, hundreds of uh, Degongs were inhabited in the waters of the Odisha, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, but right now, they are ext extinct from this region. Mainly in, uh, in Odisha, we are having Chilika Lake, right? So, in Chilika region, we were having the gongs in the earlier times. But right now, they were extinct in that region. Okay. Now, another point you have to remember is, 
India has signed a non-legally binding memorandum of understanding with the CMS to protect the uh, dugongs. It was in 2008. Not only for the protection of dugongs, there were lots of other species to be protected. So, India has signed a uh, memorandum of understanding with the CMS to protect the Siberian crane, marine turtles and raptors. Raptors was in 2016. And for the protection of dugongs, uh, non-legally binding memorandum of understanding was signed by the Indian government with the CMS. You might have heard about this CMS, right? CMS means Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species, right? So, this CMS is an NVM treaty under the aegis of United Nations NVM program, right? And this CMS was also there in news because in 2020 February, uh, the 13th Conference of Parties of CMS was held in the Gandhinagar of Gujarat, right? So, that's why it was in news. This CMS was also there in news, okay? These are the main points you have to remember, right? Now, let us go for the question which I have asked by the UPSC in 2015, right. So, this was the question asked by UPSC in 2015 as because a report was released in 2013, right. The question is like this, with reference to dugong, a mammal found in India, which of the following statement is or are correct, right. So, first statement, it is a herbivorous marine animal, yes, it is a herbivorous marine animal, we said that it, they are grazing on the seagrass. So, first statement is correct, so we eliminated B and D. Now, by the remaining option, we only need to know whether second or third is correct, right. So, if one of them is correct, the next statement will be wrong, right. Second statement, it is found along the entire coast of India. That is a wrong statement, right. It is not found on the entire coast of India. There are some regions only we can see the dugongs right now, right. Earlier, the Odisha and all these regions were having the dugong and right now, they were regionally extended there, right. So, that is why it is not found along the entire coast of India. Some regions only we can see the dugong, like the Gulf of Manar region, Gulf of Kachi region, Andaman Nicobar like that, okay. So, second statement is wrong, that is why we got the answer as C, 1 and 3. That means, third statement is correct. It is given legal protection under the schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So, this was the question asked by UPSC. So, the answer will be C, 1 and 3. Now, let us move on to the model question. So, this is the model question. With reference to dugong, which of the following statements are correct? It is an aquatic mammal, yes, it is an aquatic animal and it is a mammal, right. So, first statement is correct. So, we eliminated B. Then, second statement, its preferred habitat is freshwater areas. So, that is a wrong statement. Why? Because dugong is strictly a marine mammal. So, that is why second statement is wrong, right. So, if the second statement is wrong, we, will, we can eliminate B and D. Now, the third statement, it is not naturally found in India. That is a wrong statement. India is having the population of dugong, right. So, that is why third is also wrong. So, the answer will come as A1 only, okay. Thank you.